Hey everyone, Nicky Skevich here of Daily Fantasy Winners. This is week eight of the NFL season uh, coming up here this weekend. And and one of the things that I get asked about quite a lot on Twitter these days is just from a device standpoint on picks actually is what defenses should I be using? And a lot of people have been citing how high the ownerships have been for, you know, some of the top defenses each week and some of the most expensive ones, which, you know, a lot of people are going to do that, you know, using you know, defenses like, you know, the people, a lot of you people use the Broncos this weekend. A lot of people will certainly use uh, the Vikings as well, obviously on Monday night with their uh, matchup with the Chicago Bears. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been even so much quite the case this year. Some of the top defenses have turned out to be the best ones, uh, you know, each week this year. But there are some cases where it hasn't been. And usually most often, rather than not, there's usually a defense or two that come out of nowhere that uh, can often have the best value or be just the highest scoring, uh, you know, defense of the week. So I wanted to give you my three uh, kind of bold defense, bold prediction defenses that I think uh, has great potential uh you know, for uh, performing very well this week and some uh, high upside, uh, you know, as well. So uh, to start off with this, um, this is our NFL Sportsbook point projections here, as you can see. And uh, for the first one, I'm going to start off with actually for the defense that I like is Washington. And Washington is playing Cincinnati this week. And as you're going to see, Cincinnati is projected for 25 points at the sports books as of right now. And you're thinking, now that's a lot of points. Uh, that's, you know, they're the, what is that, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, that's the set, tied for seventh highest with Green Bay uh, for most points this week. That's kind of a lie. You know, why would I use them? Cincinnati's a three point favorite right now. Well, the one thing that you can usually get easy points on that a lot of people still tend to overlook, even though uh, fantasy football has been around for a while and this hasn't changed, is sacks. Uh, sacks is a, a great finding great sacks matchups is something that still is underutilized, uh, you know, in daily fantasy football right now. And so uh, it is a great sacks matchup. And so uh, Washington is seventh in sacks this year and Cincinnati has allowed the second most, which is definitely a, uh, a, a, a great sign. And then, of course, if you actually even take a look at Cincinnati's uh, schedule this season, they haven't even faced that many good pass rushes this year. They face the Broncos, which obviously has a great pass rush. But other than that, it's been a lot of mediocre to poor pass rushes that they face this year. I mean, they faced Cleveland last week. And even though I know Cincinnati uh, won the game by a couple of touchdowns there, or uh, was it 31-17, I believe. But at the same time, uh, Cleveland sacked uh, Cincinnati three times and three points for the Cleveland defense. And so uh, obviously uh, Washington, uh, a, a better pass rush than Cleveland's. And uh, the other thing I'll also add on this is this line opened at a, as a as Cincinnati as a six point favorite and the line dropped immediately all the way down. Uh, you know, to three points. I don't know if some people thought this game was, uh, you know, being played in Cincinnati, but this game is actually being played in London. So uh, obviously Vegas would make that mistake, of course, but uh, they opened this line pretty highly for Cincinnati and uh, line dropped there pretty quickly in favor of Washington. It's all the way down to actually to uh, Cincinnati three, even money as well. So it may, we may even see it go below three, actually. It wouldn't shock me if it went under three, um, you know, before kickoff on Sunday. And so, uh, you know, it, the game's in London. You never know how that's going to play in the situation sometimes there's a little bit of higher upside there um just it's another variable to deal with where things get a little bit crazy and then uh, Andy Dalton by the way I mean he has been playing much better as of late over the last few weeks but I will also add, add that Andy Dalton usually once or twice a year just has a really really bad performance um he's usually good for one or two of those and I'm not saying uh he should be expected to, to have like the, the most atrocious game of his life but you never know if he has a if he faces a bad pass rush in the offensive line breaks down the games in London you never know how that's that's going to turn out I would say that there's going to be even some greater uh, turnover potential just because of this um, obviously Cincinnati should still you know there should be a still expected score you know a few touchdowns and everything like that but I would say that there's some good probability for Washington to get some good sacks and potentially uh, some, some, some turnovers and maybe a pick six so that's the first one I would take a look at there for a bold prediction defense um, the second one this one has maybe not quite as bold um, it's got the highest floor of the three I'm going to talk about, but probably a lot of people still aren't using them as much as people should be just because JJ Watts out for the year. I don't know if that's part of the public perception playing into it, but I, it is the Houston Texans defense this week. They're at home against the Detroit lions. And as you can see, according to uh, the books right now, Detroit is projected for 21 Point two five points, which looks like it is the sixth fewest, or I can't count the seventh fewest uh, of the week, which is still pretty low, obviously. Um, this is another good sacks matchup as well. Not quite as good as the first one, but uh, this is Houston's 11th in sacks this year, and Detroit has given up the fourth most, uh, you know, this this season. So 
Uh, that's pretty good, certainly, no doubt. And then uh, Houston's pass D, just, just their pass D straight up in their corners, they've been very, very good this year. I, mean, I feel like that that's something that – a lot of people forget about with Houston a little bit that yes, uh, Brock Osweiler struggling. The offense is uh, absolutely not moving the ball uh, as well as they should be. Uh, the wide receivers certainly aren't, uh, especially DeAndre Hopkins is not pre- uh, performing as well as most people would like him to. But at the same time, Houston's pasty, it's still been very good, and the pass rush has part as, a, as plays a part role. Uh, a part in that. So, and then the other thing I'll also say is uh, Detroit is a high passing offense right now, which is a little bit interesting just because they've been a little bit more balanced under Jim Caldwell since he took over. But uh, this year, uh, Detroit's gone back to being a little bit more pass heavy, which probably best, you know, fits their offense overall. And, uh, but, but because of that, and there is the pass rush, that's more opportunity for sacks. And, uh, you know, Detroit's just a high passing volume team. There's more chances for pick sixes. And uh, as we saw with Matthew Stafford in Chicago a, a few weeks ago, he can have some really bad games as well, kind of like Andy Dalton. So, and Detroit is on the road here. And so that's usually when Stafford does have uh, his occasional really, really bad game. So uh, some upside there. And I think there's a little bit of a higher floor there as well with Houston's. They, you're not running into too much danger. I will, I'd be shocked if this was uh, a shootout. Um, and quite frankly, Detroit, a lot of people are, you know, loving some of these comebacks that Matthew Stafford's having. I really just, I pumped the brakes on that. I really don't think Detroit is that great of a team um, just overall right now. And I think Houston really is a better team. I actually think Houston's a better team on a neutral field still, despite their struggles uh, in the passing game. So, and this line right now is Houston, I believe. Uh, Houston by two and a half, does it say on our thing right now? Yeah, Houston by two and a half. So, I actually think that line's a, a touch short. But in any case, uh, either way, Houston, uh, my second uh, defense uh or pick for bold predictions. And then the third one, and this one is really bold. So I will definitely caution and say, you do not want to use this defense a lot, but I actually have some sneaky optimism here for it. And that is the Cleveland Browns, believe it or not. And I know the Browns defense is one of the worst in the NFL. And it is, I'm not denying that whatsoever. Um, I, you know, went to school at Bowling Green in Ohio and I met a lot of Browns fans and I ended up watching a lot of Browns football. Actually, I was there and um, learning a lot about their history and stuff and just everything like that. And I still pay attention to them quite a bit. And some of my friends have said this still may be just because of how banged up they are and how depleted the roster is, that this defense is really, is really bad. However, there's, I'm going to look at this from a few different angles, okay? Um, this Jets line has moved all the way down. It opened at about four and a half uh, once we found out, uh, you know, Geno Smith wasn't playing Matthew, Fe- or Matthew, almost a Matthew Fitzpatrick, the golfer. Matt, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> was going to be starting for the Jets, of course. And, um, and we found out Josh McCown was starting as well. This line opened at four and a half at most books, and it's all the way down to th- Jets by three even money. And uh, the Jets are only projected for 23 points, which is quite frankly, that's middle of the road this week. Um, It's not really that much. And uh, there is a lot of public perception that, you know, people are just betting against the Browns every week uh, in their eliminator and their survivor leagues. Um, A lot of people are just doing in Vegas. They're betting against the Browns. I think that is a huge mistake, actually, quite frankly, right now. Uh, I think Hugh Jackson is very good coach. And that mostly does come on the offensive side of the ball, to be fair. Um, But at the same time, I legitimately believe if Jackson was not the coach of the Browns, the Browns would actually, in in terms of Vegas, they would be double-digit underdogs on a neutral field pretty much to uh, not every team. I won't say every team, obviously, but to to, uh, to a majority of teams, I'll certainly say that. Um, This roster really is depleted, and a lot of teams would just be, you know, we'd be looking at the, the really bad Jaguars, you know, type of things from a few years ago uh, for like, you know, the Patriots, they were favored by what was it like 17 points against them. I think the Broncos were like that, or maybe it was even closer to 20. We'd be seeing lines like that um, with the Browns, but I think Hugh Jackson is playing a, a great role in keeping their, uh, keeping them at least somewhat respectably bad, if that makes sense. Now to try and convince now, convince people of this, that this actually could work um, as far as he, Cleveland's defense being a decent play. Um, a, they are just very cheap. So obviously if you have a, a contrarian lineup where you really uh, like uh, using some higher salary players, um, the Browns defense just won't be used very much in GPP formats. And uh, you, you know, you can squeeze them into your lineup, especially there on, uh, on DraftKings as well. They're extremely cheap there, I believe. 
Uh, but on top of this, uh, you know, with McCown being back at quarterback, the Browns will probably have the ball on offense a lot longer because McCown is the best of the Cleveland Browns quarterbacks. I do think Cleveland wins this game straight up just because that line of the way the movement has been going. And I really, the Jets are very uh, high turnover prone, um, especially with what Fitzpatrick has shown us this year so far. Um, Eric Decker being out has really hurt their passing game. And also the last thing I'll add is if you look at weather reports for Cleveland, yeah, it's there's a slight potential of rain. I don't really care about that. 10 to 15 mile an hour winds, that's a little bit of wind, but that's really not that bad. The thing, though, is the gusts actually on the lake can get definitely higher than 50 miles an hour, and it's possible they could get up to more like to 20 miles an hour. And I'm recording this on a Thursday night, and we'll see what the weather you know plays out to be as we get a little bit closer to kickoff. But I really do think, you know, with the if the wind is up more in the 20 to 25 mile an hour range with gusts of wind like that, uh, you could get uh, a very inaccurate Fitzpatrick uh, passing performance, and you could we could very easily see like a 16-13 Browns win type here. That's kind of what I'm expecting here with this contest. Browns might even score a little bit more than that because I really like uh, uh, what Hugh Jackson's able to do. But uh, in any case, I do – yeah, so the Browns, yeah, th their floor is certainly low. I understand that because they've only had one game this year over double digits in fantasy points, uh, which was the game they had a defensive uh, touchdown against the Miami Dolphins. And for the most part, they've just been, you know – barely positive points, but this is a week I actually think there is a legit chance that they could be in double digit points uh, without getting a, a defensive touchdown. You know, I do expect the Browns to force a few turnovers this week, but um, uh, you know, hopefully a defensive touchdown would be nice because there's going to be some luck, obviously luck involved with that. But in any case, those are my three bold predictions on, uh, you know, some cheaper defenses or some, uh, not, not some of the top defenses, if you will. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, you can like and subscribe to us on our Twitch and YouTube channel channels here at Daily Fantasy Winners. Uh, I'm at Nick Yuskevich on Twitter and Daily Fantasy Winners at D Fantasy Winners. All right, good luck, everyone.